Hey, good morning, gang. I wanted to spend a few minutes today and talk about creating grading objects in Civil 3D for grading optimization. So it's just a couple ideas for streamlining that process, maybe create some layers, uh, make sure you have clear names to find, and really understanding zones is what we're really getting into. So our agenda today. So working with grading objects, this could be on the Civil 3D side, just to upstream what you set up, that foundation you create, and how it's going to interact with your iterative design process with uh, Go. So first thing, layers defining objects. So this could be a good idea to crack open that tempo file and create some new layers, put that grading limit on its own defined layer. And we'll take a look at that when we get into Civil here in a bit. Second thing, naming convention. So it sounds, sounds pretty simple, but give it a name that's unique to that specific object. So one thing you'll see is that in grading optimization, things get combined into a zone. A parking lot and a sidewalk are different grading objects in Civil 3D. In grading optimization, that's considered a zone, and there's a hierarchy involved. Six me my third point. So understanding that hierarchy, what objects what, which one's on the top, is the most important. Is your sidewalk more important than your parking lot, or vice versa? and making sure that you know what's what so that you can establish that early on and not be backtracking and trying to figure out what's what in your design. So let's jump into Civil 3D here. And we're going to work on a site I've been working on a little bit for a presentation. So this is our Top Gun, our Top Gun building out here in Portland, Oregon. And you can see this is our existing parking lot. We have quite a few parking spaces. And we are going to expand our parking lot here. So we're going to have the road wrap around the outside of the back of the building here. So we can connect through and then we're going to add 15, 20 parking spaces in. So we just have an XRF here. We're just going to unload this to make it a little bit less busy. Keep in mind, you could be pulling these objects out of your XRF to create the grading objects from it. And then this green exterior is my existing surface. So we're just going to turn that off too. And we're just going to make that a no display just to make it a little bit less busy, just to isolate our grading objects. So you can see here, these are a bunch of grading objects I've created, or polylines I've created and put on specific layers to create grading objects from that. So if we go to our first yellow line right here on the exterior, this is a polyline. You can see it's on the layer C-grade, G-R-A-D, dash limit, L-M-T, and this is going to be the extents of our site. So I've put everything on the layer that I think that that's the grading object it's going to be. So and you can see here on the left side, I have all these layers created for each grading or potential grading object. So let's go ahead and select the grading limit and let's isolate this selected layer. So we're going to select that and now I just have my grading limit displayed. So we select our first object and you can see I've already defined a grading limit there. So and I named it GL. So let's go ahead and X out of this and we're going to type lay on. Okay. Now we're going to go ahead and do this for our drain lines. So grading limit, let's turn you off. I like to freeze them as I go just to eliminate my, um, too, so there's not too many objects displayed. And then let's go ahead and we're going to select our drain lines. So see grade drain, and then we're going to isolate these selected layers. And you can see these are all my drain lines and we're going to select them all. And then we're going to go to our drain line in our tool palette and select that. So you can see there's a few defined here, but since I have them all selected, I can't edit the name, but you notice that it defaults to the layer name. So C-grade, G-R-A-D-drain, D-R-A-N. So let's go ahead and give each of those unique names. So close this here. And you can see in our grading objects browser, we now have a bunch of drain lines. So let's go ahead and unselect them all. And we're gonna start from the top here. So I'm just gonna call this DL Southeast. DL Southwest, DL North, oh, should have named on me, and, and so I have a couple different ideas for my drain lines, so I'm going to name this option two. This might be, uh, I'm not going to run all these drain lines at the same time. I might, I'm just going to run a couple of them, see what it does. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll run this one if I don't like what my design looks like. So DL option two, we'll call this DL mid. And we'll call this DL southeast option two. Okay. So now let's go ahead and turn everything back on. And let's go ahead and select that curb layer. Let's turn off 
our drain lines and now let's isolate our curbs. So isolate selected layers and these are all my curbs that I'm going to create in my drawer. So let's just go ahead and shorten that a little bit and we can select curb first this time and now we'll select our curbs in our drawer. So you can see that it defaults to that higher end, that darker side, to the shaded sides, the higher side of your curb. So let's go ahead and close this, and we're going to give all these curbs unique names. So we'll call this C North, and I'm just giving these really abbreviated names for time right here. So we'll call this C Southeast, and we'll call this Island Mid South. Oh, let's we'll call it Island Mid, and we'll call this Island Mid Northeast. Island Mid Southeast. And then C North, let's we'll call it CN. And we'll call this C Southwest. Okay, now we have all our curves defined. So let's go ahead and let's grab our parking lot here. So C grade, let's call this C grade park. Oh, let's bring, turn our layers back on here. Okay, now let's turn our curbs off. Curbs are now off, and now let's isolate our parking lot. So isolate selected layers. So we'll select first, and then we'll select our parking lot. And we'll just call this parking, close you out. And let's see what else do we have left here. Let's grab our edges. Oh, let me turn our layers back on here. And then let's turn our park off here, freeze you. So these are our aligned edges. So, and what this is, is just a break line on top of our drain line. So it's forcing that triangulation. So let's go ahead and isolate these right here, isolate selected layers. And you can see we have a couple aligned edges. So we're going to find our aligned edge right here, and we're just going to close that. So just for these, I'm just going to leave these with those default layer names, and we're just going to wrap up our final objects here. So edges, uh, let's go ahead and select our wall, and let's go ahead and turn these off right here. So you can see we have three objects left. So let's grab our edge. So isolate selected layers. Oh, no, I didn't want to do that. We want to isolate you. Isolate selected layers. And this is going to be our retaining wall. So we select the object and let's select our retaining wall in our drive. And I'm just going to leave this default name just for time's sake. But keep in mind those names should be unique. Okay, and then the last two objects here, we're going to turn you off. Now we have our edge. We're going to turn you off. So now we have two objects left. So this one is going to be our sidewalk here. So we'll isolate selected layers. And we're going to select you. And we're going to make you a sidewalk. So keep in mind, this is going to be a zone. So the name's important for this. So sidewalk. And we'll call this side, sidewalk. North. OK. And then we're going to turn all our layers back on here. And now we're going to do our final object, which is our generic zone. So C grade walk, turn you off. Here's our generic zone. So we're going to, and we don't need to isolate for this because it's our last one. Select the object, and let's call it a zone. And so this is where this is going to default into that zone category. So we're just going to call this parking entrance. And we're going to close that. And now we have all our grading objects defined. You can see that we have them all down here in our browser. But you can also see that our three zones have been combined. So our C grade park, our parking lot is one zone, sidewalk and parking entrance. So all three of those, even though they were a different, um, you use a different tool to grab the object, it's combined into that zone category. So let's jump into grading optimization here. Analyze, optimize, and we're just gonna say enter to use that EG surface. And now we're launching grading optimization. So what we're going to take a look at here is those objects and turning objects off and on is that iterative process and the zone hierarchy. So first thing, we'll see here, these are the same objects we created. And we have a retaining wall right here. You can see that's right there. We can turn it off. We can turn it on. That's where our retaining wall is. 
This would turn it off from running, so toggle active, inactive. So what that means is you could run the optimization process down here and not run the retaining wall solution. So this can be handy with your drain lines. So say you don't have a, you know, say you, you don't exactly want, we want to put a few drain lines in and maybe combine one with the other, maybe not run them all, maybe run half of them, same process, turn them off, turn them on. Now zones, this is where this gets important. So you can see this is our parking lot right here. Turn that off, turn that on. And if we, now with zones, you probably might, you, hey, you might run them all, you might not run them all, but the hierarchy is important. So what this means is that the constraints of the parking lot are the most important. So if the parking lot overlaps the sidewalk, then it's gonna take the parameters, it's gonna, it's gonna override the parameters of the sidewalk. So for example, you can see here, in the front, I have my parking lot right here, and then I have my parking entrance. Those overlap. So whichever one has the more strict parameters, so say the parking lot has more strict parameters, it's going to take that precedence because it's higher up on the hierarchy. So if, you, if your parking entrance has more strict parameters and you want those to take precedence, you would drag it up to the top, and your parking entrance now is the most important zone if any of them were to overlap. So just to sum things up, three different things to think about. So layers, layers in your template file, maybe have some colors with them just to define those objects on a layer before you create that grading object, can help streamline things. And giving things a clear name so that when their you know, sidewalks and parking lots are combined into the same zone, you know exactly what's what. And third thing, that zone hierarchy. So whatever's on top is gonna to be the most important, followed by everything else below it. And that'll control what parameters you have set. So if you have the more strict parameters, for say your parking entrance, probably want that one above your parking lot. So three big things to focus on. Hopefully, hopefully you find this helpful and uh, thank you for your time.